I have with me the Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong. Many thanks for speaking with the NDTV. Oh, it's really good to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. My first question is with regards to the G20 Foreign Ministers mm. meeting for which you're traveling mm -hmm. to India. How critical are these meetings in the run-up to the final summit in September? And how significant will it be in arriving at some sort of a consensus or common meeting ground, considering that very sharp differences have emerged during the finance minister's meeting in Bengaluru only last week. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh, a big gap between Russia and China on the one side and the Western nations mm -hmm. on the other. Mm -hmm. Well, look, there are differences, and there almost always are. Uh, and regrettably, uh, you know, those differences continue. But what, what I would say is this. The problems that humanity faces, the challenges in the global economy, pandemics, climate change, strategic competition, how we ensure that the world remains peaceful and stable and secure, all of these require us to work together, a point that your External and Affairs Minister, Jashanka, has made very eloquently. Uh, so uh, the, these meetings do matter. Uh, they matter greatly because they are uh, an occasion where the world can come together uh, through um, uh, the largest economies and those invited and try and uh, come to a position uh, on many of the issues that you've described and to uh, take those matters forward. Mm. Ultimately, we have to work together because no one country can resolve any of these problems by itself. So how challenging will India's role be considering it's uh, holding the presidency of the G20? I have enormous regard for your nation's diplomatic capability uh, and uh, your long history and of strategic wisdom uh, and uh, I have no doubt that India will discharge its role as chair uh, wisely uh, and with vision. Uh, what I would say is Australia as uh, a close friend, uh, I hope a trusted friend, uh, as a comprehensive strategic partner of India, we will do all we can to uh, support India in ensuring this G20 is a success. We are seeing uh, the Ukraine war continuing. Mm. It's been one year now, and mm -hmm. the spillover effects mm. uh, in energy crisis, in food crisis, are going well beyond the borders of Europe. Under these circumstances, why are the leaders of the largest economies, the more, most powerful leaders of the world, failing in finding and pushing for a resolution and ending the war? Uh, this war has been uh, you know, horrific for the Ukrainian people. But it has also been disastrous for Mr Putin and for Russia. Uh, what it has shown the world, what, it, what, what we have seen is the world united yeah, uh, uh, against Russia's aggression. What we have seen is uh, uh, country standing steadfast with Ukraine and we will continue to do that because Russia's illegal and immoral invasion uh, abrogates the UN Charter which protects us all. But you ask a very relevant question. It is true that the war in Ukraine uh, is disrupting global energy markets, it is disrupting uh, global food supply uh, at a time where we already have a lot of challenges in the global economy. Uh, our view is we remain steadfast in support of Ukraine until Mr Putin realises it is actually in his and Russia's interests to resolve this peacefully. Do you see the Ukraine war overshadowing uh, uh, the G20 foreign minister's uh, meeting then? Because there are many other critical issues. There are about 70 countries at the moment that are engaging with the IMF to stabilise their economies. Mm -hmm. Don't you think the focus should be on helping those vulnerable countries out? Uh, do you see that everything, the agenda getting derailed because of the Ukraine war and the language and the text being used in the joint communique, uh, which uh, is finding no consensus right now? Uh, we have to do, uh, uh, respond to all of those issues. Uh, and I'd note that the finance minister's meeting uh, in, uh, uh, in their statement went to uh, many of the economic issues that you describe, including you know, the, the, the multilateral financial institutions, looking at uh, how the, the sustainability of debt, uh, many of these matters which are about trying to strengthen the global economy, particularly with reference uh, to nations which are in uh, very difficult financial circumstances. Uh, I have no doubt that a whole range of those matters will be discussed in the context of foreign ministers. Uh, what I would say, though, is 
The reason we believe Ukraine matters is because the UN Charter has protected us all since the end of World War II. And so a country which abrogates it uh, needs to have the response uh, that is being seen uh, by uh, others in the international community. And an issue like climate uh, finance mm. and mm. climate justice, do you think that can be pushed to uh, the background because of this overarching issue of Ukraine now? Uh, we should continue to uh, uh, ensure that our response to the climate crisis is one which is ambitious and collective. Uh, and Australia, as you know, has a, a government and a parliament which has been elected with greater ambition on climate. Uh, and we, we intend to ensure that ambition is translated, is effect, given effect, not just domestically, but also internationally. Let's talk about the bilateral uh, issues between India and Australia. Uh, there has just been uh, uh, the interim trade deal that has come mm -hmm. into force. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Prime Minister Albanese is going to be travelling to India in less than a week's time now. Uh, what should we expect? Uh, uh, well, our friendship, mm -hmm. our desire to grow the relationship, are very clear uh, understanding about the shared purpose, uh, our alignment around strategic issues and uh, our recognition of the importance of our economic and trade relationships. So the Prime Minister will be accompanied uh, by other economic ministers and CEOs uh, because we understand the importance of growing the economic relationship as well as our deep strategic cooperation which will continue. Uh, Australia, as you know, we have a a very vibrant and growing Indian diaspora uh, that adds vibrancy and warmth to our, our friendship. Uh, we also want to keep growing the economic side of our relationship uh, and I'm sure the Prime Minister's visit will enable that. Since you mentioned the Indian diaspora, mm. uh, there has been an unfortunate incident uh, recently mm. uh, where uh, some Indians who were carrying the Indian tricolour uh, were targeted by mm. a, a pro-secessionist group mm. uh, pro-Khalistanis. Uh, has India raised the matter with Australia about uh, uh, the Khalistani sentiment mm. uh, that uh, is being seen there mm. in Australia? I'd make a few points. The first point I would make is we respect India's sovereignty uh, and uh, the, um, uh, the, the Khalistani issue which was raised is obviously uh, has been raised through protests but uh, their, their, their poll, as they call it, has no status. We respect India's sovereignty. Uh, on the broader issue, which is uh, the, the concerns that you've raised, I would say we, we have a society where we would expect um, uh, any criminal activity uh, to be responded to. Uh, we, would, uh, we, we believe uh, in a, a democratic society uh, where people should feel safe uh, and uh, where people should be free to express who they are, uh, they should feel respected in terms of their faith and their heritage. And we want that for our Indian diaspora and for the broader Australian community. Also about the students, has mm. have issues regarding visas now been resolved? Are Indian students uh, uh, going smoothly into Australian uh, uh, institutions and uh, universities? And I understand that two Australian universities are going to set up campuses in India. How is that likely to benefit uh, Indian students? Uh, well, I've got, we have the Minister for Education here in, in India uh, as you and I speak, uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, he will do what I, what I know he wants to do, which is to talk with uh, you know, your institutions, with your officials, uh, with your community about how we uh, maximise the benefit for both countries out of our engagement, whether that's Indian students coming to Australia or, of course, uh, facilities being offered here in India. Mm. Uh, one question with regards uh, to the Quad ministerial mm. meeting. Mm. We were expecting that uh, it would be held uh, right after the G20 foreign ministers meeting, although no formal announcement has been made. But is Quad still relevant or is AUKUS now overshadowing Quad? Because that's a security the, the, alliance. The, their complement should be very different. And I would say the Quad is deeply relevant. Uh, the Quad matters a great deal to Australia uh, and to other Quad partners, including India, I'm sure. Uh, and ultimately, the Quad is about uh, making sure we have a region uh, which is stable, secure, prosperous, and in, in which sovereignty is respected, uh, where we can cooperate not only on strategic matters, 
uh, bond on, on matters which are about benefiting, uh, benefiting the, the communities who live in the Indo-Pacific. And obviously the vaccines uh, is the most recent example of that and we will look to build on it. And I do want to emphasise again how much we value India as a partner in the Quad Arrangements. My final question is with regards to the women political leadership. Mm -hmm. We've had two uh, recent cases of uh, Jacinda Ardern and Nicola Sturgeon stepping down, saying that, uh, indicating a burnout. What kind of message does that send out, send out? Do you think their honesty that they need to pause is appreciated or can it have a different sort of an outcome? Oh, look, I, I think we should recognise that both uh, former Prime Minister Ardern and, and um, Nicola Sturgeon were were long serving, and you know they are, they serve their countries or their constituencies for a long period of time. People people decide to to move on, and they uh, but they both were, I think, very strong and impressive examples of leadership, uh, including uh, for women uh, around the world, but uh, for for many people. Many thanks. But I was going to say, you, yes. you're not, I mean, you have a lot of, you have a history of you know, women leaders, women, women leaders yes. as well. In, in India. This, yes, that's, that's right. right. That's yes. right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you, you feel that it won't send out a wrong message? Then? Well, I hope not, okay. because I, I have a view that the world, then the, the communities that are represented by leaders mm -hmm. or by parliaments or by whatever political system uh, are better represented when, when those leadership uh, groups reflect the population. I think that is a good thing. It adds, the diversity adds strength. Many thanks for speaking with us, Penny Wong. Thank good to you. be with you.